I'm going to show you how to begin using Data Studio from scratch. So I am in my uh, Data Studio in my account and I'm just going to start a new project from scratch. And one of the first things that I need to do is add a data source. So I think that I will do a, uh, do a search for my data source. So it's looking at some of my original data sources, but I'm going to create a new data source and it brings me to this page. I am going to use a Google Sheet. Um, I'm going to look at some items. I'm going to use this copy of the full year SIS dashboard and of those I'm going to use the attendance sheet. Okay, And I'm just going to connect that to my Data Studio report. And then I'm going to go ahead and immediately make do some changes. I'm going to uh, create a count of first name, a count of last name, a count of grade, a count of homeroom, a count of school, a count of gender, a count of meal code, and a count of ethnicity. And the reason I'm going to do all those is to um, be able to use those in some metrics. We'll have to come back here and make some more, but I wanted to start with that. I'm going to add that to the report. And now I'm looking at my uh, blank report, and I want to, uh, first of all, make some changes to it. It's starting off as a 1,200 by 900 um, sized report and I'm finding on my Google sites that I want to move that down to 1150 but uh, the 900 is probably fine. So I'm making that change just immediately on my layout. Uh, now I'm going to use some of these tools and I think I'll just go ahead and add my ethnicity in a pie chart just to show you real quickly. So when I bring this up it wants to use my lookup column initially which I don't want so I just select that and I'm going to go to ethnicity. And because I set up the count of ethnicity, I actually have now a setup for my gender, or uh, excuse me, my ethnicity. So with that, I uh, again, it's um, the metric is the ID. What I want the metric to be there is count ethnicity. So what that's going to do is give me that count. The next thing I do right away is I go to style and I make some changes to this. I want the background color, for instance, of my, um, my met metric to be black, perhaps. Um, and this is all up to you, which one, that's a little bit too dark. So let's just make it orange just for, yeah, that's terrible. Um, I'm going to make it a, a, a gray color. And then I'm going to say, OK, right in here, it's showing percentages, but I'd rather see the value. OK. And then I might decide that I want a little donut hole uh, in there. So those are just basic ways to start playing around with that particular um, so that's a that's a pie chart let's move on to a a graph I'm going to just choose a bar chart here and I'm going to build my bar chart again it's wanting to use my lookup this is a case where I wanted to use school and I want to do a, a, a metric of the school that's good then my metric down here is going to be the count of school so I'm making those two changes really quickly and that's done. And then I come over here to style. I decide I want it to be this kind of a chart, maybe make it a little bit taller so we can actually see the data. And then, of course, just start playing around with the, um, the way you want this to look. And, you know, whether you add a, a, a shadow border. Uh, coming back to this one, I think I want to do that also. So now I actually have a count school. Oh, and then here, if I didn't want that to say count school, that is actually going to be... Um, See, I'm showing my data labels. I wanted to do that, but I don't want to see uh, down here. I do not want to see the. Um, uh, this tells me where there where you would put the label, and I don't want any label on that particular piece. And I could also come in here now and add um, titles. I could show the axis title and show the axis title. So that's my school and the count of school. Okay. Now let's move on to a scorecard. I use these quite a bit. And in this scorecard, I'm going to uh, choose a metric. And in this case, my metric is going to be the count of um, last name, because that'll give me all of my students. 
and that basically gives me a scorecard with a count of last name. One of the nice things about the way Data Studio works, I can change this name to, um, I could change this for instance to enrolled students. Okay, and then I can play around again with the style and come in here and do whatever I'd like. I like to center these two things and maybe give it a different background. I, you know, maybe I want that to be red. Oops, I'm going to have to change my font color to white if I do that and, and uh, maybe make it a little bit bigger. So I go to 36. So there's a, there's a scorecard, what I call a scorecard, and that's showing me my enrolled students. I'm wondering how many days of enrollment I have, so I'm going to, one thing I can do quickly is just duplicate that, and then I can just put it where I want, and then all I need to do is change the metric here to um, days enrolled, and then the metric I'm going to choose there when I look at days enrolled, it's going to be max, and that's going to give me my total uh, maximum number of days enrolled as it looks at that. I, you know, you, you have these choices when you are um, putting information in there. Next, I might want a grade level bar chart. So I'm going to select my bar chart, come in here. It's going to change to grade, and I'm going to see all my grade levels here. Now, one of the things I noticed with this, when I go to the style here, I'm not seeing all of my 12 grades. So I found that I had to um, change the number of bars so that I could see um, all of the grade level that I have here. And now I think I have them all, but they're not sorted. So then when I come down to the data of this, I would sort by, um, well, actually, I, I need to change this to count grade. And then I can um, sort this by count grade ascending. Well, actually, I, I think I want to change this metric not to count grade, but to actually, well, yes, um, that is the count grade. Um, I've had to play with this to get this to sort the way I wanted to right now. I see what it's doing. It's, it's sorting by the count of grade, and I actually want that to sort by the grade level. So... Um, I have to play around with that. So what I found I was doing here really is, is showing the number of students in each school. So I'm going to add a dimension here and I'm going to add school. And then what I would do with this graph is decide to make it a, um, a stacked bar chart and show my data labels. And then um, and then my metric back here is something that I was calling the number of students. So um, let, let me check real quick. Okay, so I figured out what I was doing here to get this. So basically coming back to the data on this stacked bar chart, I have the grade and then I have the school and then I'm doing a count of last name to come up with these uh, number of students in there. And then my sort is by grade ascending. Um, unfortunately, the way kindergarten shows up there it ends up being outside of that, um, that report there. But you can see uh, in, in this case, we have these different colors for each school and we have the number of, of, uh, of uh, students in each grade. When I'm looking at the data set, there's some things you can do. For instance, I'm not really ever using the lookup or the ID, and I can um, actually disable that. Um, it doesn't affect any of my data because I'm not using it anywhere, and then it's not going to pop up as a metric that we might start to, to use. Um, so I want to say done to that. Now I want to add a count of SPED with a scorecard. So I grab my scorecard. Well, you know what? Even better than, than doing that, I could make a little scorecard, but I'm going to get rid of that. I can just take a scorecard. I find this easier and go ahead and, and duplicate it. And then I just change the metric. So in this case, this would be my count of SPED. Oh, and I didn't create a count of SPED. So 
you get to that uh, place there, well, um, let's see, I could do a, a count of, uh, well, no, let me go ahead and, and um, I'm going to have to go back. Here's how I go back to the data source. And I didn't do a count of SPED. So I'm going to do count, oops, uh, I have to duplicate SPED, okay? And then this would be um, in this copy of SPED. I can create a formula that basically is a count. So now I have a count of SPED um, and I will uh, go ahead and, and click here and rename that this is SPED count. So I'm changing that in the report itself so it's a metric I can begin to use. And then I say done to that. Now when I come here I have a metric I can do called SPED count and that gives me my 304 and again I, I'm using the same size scoreboard so initially in my report back here this uh, this field sped was uh, it, it didn't give me uh, it didn't really give me what I wanted for this for the count of sped so I had to duplicate it and make a count so now that I, I have my SPED count that I've created and renamed, I'd now like to create a SPED percent. And I can do that by, um, again, I can duplicate this and come in and immediately rename it. This is going to be SPED percent. Okay. And in SPED percent, I am going to create a new formula for this, SPED percent, and my formula is going to be, one moment, it's going to be the count of SPED. Now I can just start typing here, count, and I can count, uh, come up here and it's going to give me my possibilities. Uh, actually, it's SPED count, so I, that's how I named it. So I'm going to do my SPED count, uh, that was wrong, went too fast. SPED, oh, come on. So before that finishes out, SPED count, then that's divided by um, count last name or first name, whichever. I'm going to do it divided by, and I'm going to update that field. And then I want my SPED percent to V, I'll change this here, I'll change it to a percent right there. So my SPED percent is automatically a percent and I actually have a field I can, I can work with now. So then I can duplicate this and I can take my SPED count and just change this to my SPED percent. And it's already a, a percent. So. That's how I'm working with scorecards to get um, things like enrolled students, days enrolled, SPED count, SPED percent. Again, when I am working with one of these, you have to select something to get back to your data source and come in here. Now, my attendance um, percent, I can work with this attendance percent, and it is a, uh, it's a percent, but notice if I just try to use my attendance percent. Let me make a duplicate here. And I'm going to then change this to be attendance percent. And so that's giving me an attendance percent of, um, well, we have to take a look at what this attendance is. And let me, let me come back over here and take a look at what is this attendance percent. It's a percent sum. So that's not really correct. It's a percent average, okay? And then if I say done to that, now that's giving me a tennis percentage. However, what I discovered in doing this is that when I do it that way, I'm getting the um, average of a column I've added to my spreadsheet. So in this example, my spreadsheet that I'm pulling this data from, I have gone ahead and um, I've created this attendance percent column here using an array formula in the original spreadsheet where I was uh, uh, calculating attendance for every student. When I put this into Data Studio, that is doing an average 
of those numbers, and I found it to not be exactly the same as the average of the total number of days present divided by the total number of days enrolled, and that um, total days present divided by total days enrolled is a more accurate representation. So, so let me show you that here really quickly. So I've added a few fields here. Notice I took days enrolled and duplicated it and uh, changed it um, to a, uh, a non-aggregated number and copy of days present and again a non-aggregated number and I'll show you why I had to do that. So if I were to type a, a formula here that says sum and then I started to type days um, it's the sum of days present so days um, present and that's divided by the sum of days enrolled. Okay. But when I try to update that, it tells me that re-aggregating metrics is not supported. So instead, I have to um, I have to do this copy of days enrolled, the one I made a copy of, the green one, copy of days present. Okay, so I am adding up the copy of all days present, and I am dividing it by the sum of all days enrolled. Now when I update that field, this calculated attendance field actually, um, notice it's a, it's a, I want to turn it into a percent right here just because it saves me a little hassle later. So my calculated percent uh, attendance should now work when I come here. Again, I'm going to change this to calculated attendance percent. And notice that's a different number than we had when we were just looking at attendance percent. Um, the attendance percent now um, is a different uh, number because it's, it's doing a sum. But if you saw back a little bit earlier in the video, that is more accurate because it's not an average of an average. And, and so that's how I found that I had to come up with that, which matched what I had on my spreadsheet. Well, that's, a, that's pretty much the summary I have for right now. I have showed you how to connect a data source. Uh, then you work with your data source. You have to uh, make some, uh, duplicate some of these uh, metrics and then change them to counts, sums, averages, and so forth. And I have found just through playing around with this, um, I had to do some things to get where I was at. So um, the one the last thing I would do here is just very simple and pretty obvious. I would just Go ahead and put in a a, a, met, a a text box that says you know attendance or whatever it's going to be. And again, then you just uh, work as you would in any other software and decide that you know this is some kind of giant font and blah blah blah. So, um, and uh, you know some of these other pieces you have up here, you can uh, put in date ranges, you can put in filters. Oh, we have not gotten to a filter. That would be one last thing. So let me let me just. Let me just move this out of the way and show one last thing, which is basically how I go ahead and put in a table and a couple of filters. I'll do that real quick. So I would come to a table and I come down here and I select a table to put in. And by, you know, the first thing I want to put in is first name. And then I would start adding dimensions. I would add last name, grade, yep, I need to add that. Then I would add grade. Excuse me, I am got a, I'm just doing this too fast. I would add last name, and then I would add a dimension, and I would have grade, and add a dimension, and I would add a homeroom. And notice these are these are the the, uh, and then and then working in the table, I can just you know move these around and sort them as I would want. Okay, and this uh, first count, oh, and then if I ended up with a first name, um, I will, uh, and, and here's my first metric, and I want my calculated attendance to be, um, there, there we go, so there's my calculated attendance. I, I have some of these other things I could add, uh, coming back here down in these metrics, then I could add the uh, number of days enrolled, and then I could add the number of 
and, and then in this case, if I don't like where it's at, I just, you know, move it. Looks like maybe I've, yeah, that moved up. So days enrolled sits above there. So I can add it, you know, mess around with my, um, my metrics here. One of the things that you want to do probably is to be able to have the, the days absence in there so that it becomes a, a header you can sort with. So now, again, you just play around with your table, getting it with the data that you would actually like. And then again, I might want days absent and uh, I might want to move these around. Actually, I might want days enrolled, days absent, days present, calculated attendance. And you can play with that. Now, the nice thing about Data Studio is I just click on view and I'm actually now taking a look at my report. And here I can go, okay, I want to show my calculated attendance. There's my lowest attendance. Here's my, and actually that ends up being the same number of days absent. Here's my zero days absent. Here's my high day absence and so forth. Now I haven't added a filter, so let me just quickly add one uh, example of a filter. I click here, I add a filter, and I just come down here. And the filter that it's wanting to add is first name. Let's say I'd really rather have that be school. Okay. And then I would have that be the count of school as my metric. So now when I come and view that and click on my school, I can see I've got that many um, students. And now I'm just looking at the high school students. If you uh, looked at that grade level, you'd see that my grade level sort between grade um, 12 and grade 8. And then I would just go ahead and add whatever filters I deem necessary. Again, uh, Data Studio, it's great. It gives us a great representation of data. And this is how I'm using it to um, pull in data from a spreadsheet that really only has um, um, some of these columns I'm not using. I added it up. I'm really only using 14 columns of data.